Jay Coughlin became the CEO of a $430 million company. But not long before serving that, he was serving a prison sentence for vehic vehicular homicide. Jay made his incredible turnaround in just four years. Take a look. In 1998, Jay Coughlin, a successful businessman, went hunting and drinking with his father. He drove home drunk and got in a terrible accident. His father didn't survive. Jay's life became a nightmare. After grieving his father and serving jail time, he was determined to rebound. Jay says anyone can turn their life around after failure if they make the right decisions. In his book, Five Bold Choices, Jay shares how to rise above whatever circumstances are facing you and reclaim your life. Well, please welcome to the 700 Club. Jay, it's great, great to have you with us. And thanks, thanks for, for your book. Um, let's, let's start where it all began for you, which is the night of the accident. What happened? I was, my dad was in town from Philadelphia. My parents were. Uh, we went out to a local hunt club. Um, afterwards, my dad and I stopped at a bar, drank too much. On the way home, missed a turn, went down a hill, and I hit a train at 60 miles an hour. Wow. And I don't remember much about that, but I remember waking up in a trauma center and I'm in a lot of pain. And I looked up and I saw my mom and I saw my wife and I could see that something was terribly wrong. My mom leaned down and said, your dad didn't make it. I said, what? And she said, your dad didn't make it. And I'm gonna tell you, you don't know what pain is until you hear something like that. And I went to a really terrible spot. Um, I was responsible for losing my dad. And for the next three days, I, was in a, I went through a lot of operations. I was in a lot of pain. I was tormented. Um, my wife looked at my eyes and said, I looked in your eyes, and you were gone and weren't coming back. And priests and pastors are coming in, and I'm kicking them out saying, don't you don't understand? I'm responsible for my dad's death. And one day, nobody's in the room. A total stranger comes in, and he's using words like forgiveness and sinner. And I said, I feel like I'm at the top of the sinner list, because I was yeah. drinking and driving, I lost my dad. I said a prayer to receive God, have received Jesus. Um, I admitted I was a sinner and I wanted him in my life. And Gordon, it was like, it was like, bam, it was like the Holy Spirit just connected to my soul. It was like oh. I just exhaled all that guilt and then he left. And my wife- Did you ever find out who he was? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But my wife walked in and saw a completely different person. I turned mm -hmm. and looked at her and I said, hey, hon, I just accepted Jesus in my life. Yeah. A lot of people have trouble forgiving themselves when they go through things and, and, you, and you start saying, I knew better, I knew not to do that, I did it anyway, and, and how, did, how, did you, how did you forgive yourself? You know, I, I think for me, I would say you got to look to the power of the Holy Spirit, uh, because for me, it was all that. You know, it was like he came and found me. And so I had this physical transformation, hmm. but it was the power of the Holy Spirit. So I would say the answer to answer your question, it was the power of the Holy Spirit. Now, to be fair, I also received forgiveness from my, my mom and my brothers and my sisters as well. Um, so that was, that was powerful. That's but, a miracle too. Uh, yeah, that was a miracle. And the, for me, the reality was the, the strength that I had now that I had this relationship with Jesus Christ was completely different now that I was in a different spot than I was before. Uh, so I think you have to go look at, look at yourself, get on, get on your knees, pray, and ask for that power. It's hard, I understand. Getting forgiveness for a lot of people is hard, mm -hmm. but I think you gotta look to the cross if you wanna really, really get there. Right, and, and let him do it. Let him do it. Let him do it. If you try to do it in your own strength, you're not gonna get there. I don't think you're gonna get you're, there. You need a miracle, yeah. and you need him to do it through you. And you, you get strength and you get peace. You know, I, I, when I was going through this trial, I was, you know, it was, it was a nightmare for me because I was guilty. Mm -hmm. And the trial took like seven months. And I had given up my life, given my life to the Lord in that hospital. But when I was in the trial, I'm like, I'm gonna go to prison for four years. I'm gonna lose my life, I'm gonna lose my job. You know, I was just like spiraling out of control. And so I started reading the word and for the first time in my life. And I remember reading Philippians. You know, chapter four, verse six and seven, it starts with, don't worry about anything. I'm like, whoa, Lord, I'm worried about everything. <laughs> don't you understand? I'm worried, you know? Don't worry about anything. I got anything. plenty to worry about. I got about. plenty to worry about. Uh, don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. When you do this, you experience God's peace, which mm -hmm. is far more wonderful than the human mind understands. And I receive peace. 
And what that meant was I could sleep. So I could get up and fight for my life and meet my lawyers and go to work, you know, as I was going through this crazy time. So I, had, I really surrendered my life at that point. I'd given my life to Christ in the hospital, but at this point I was surrendering my life. And there's an unbelievable amount of power and peace that comes along with that. Right. There is. Mm -hmm. and, and when you say, God, I trust you with my future. I was guilty. Yeah. I'm like, I'm in a court system. Yeah. I, 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 it's up to you now. You know, I'm, to, me, I, to me, I had nowhere else to go. So what happened? I ended up getting sentenced to six months. Um, and and uh, I actually, the company I was working for at the time, Lawson, had an event. I missed the first day, I missed the first night, I may, missed the second day, and I showed up, and I walked up the stage, and there was 300 people in the audience, and I got a standing ovation. One of the highlights of my business career, because mm -hmm. people were seeing me for the first time, and I was like on a cane, but I, I could, it looked like I was healed. And I got up to the microphone after the standing ovation, and I felt like saying, yesterday, I was sentenced to six months in jail, 10 years probation. What kind of roller coaster ride are you on? Standing ovation going to jail. The difference is I have a foundation now to deal with this, deal with the roller coaster ride of life. We're all going to have some highs, we're all going to have some lows, but where are you going for your power? Where are you going for your peace? Where are you going for your wisdom? Both for the humility of the highs and the challenges of the lows. Uh, so I got six months and 10 years. Wow. You then went on to make some bold choices that you write, write about that led to, by all accounts, an incredible success. What would you say is the most important choice you made? I, I think for me it was having clarity. Um, in a, my, well, the most important choice was accepting yeah. Jesus in my life. But in addition to that was having clarity. What do you want to do? Where do you want to go? How do you want to be defined? I did not want to be defined by my worst moment. Hmm. I wanted to be defined by something else. And so the issue was I spent very little time looking backwards, and I was mainly looking forward. I describe I have a small rearview mirror, and I have a giant windshield. And I can't tell you how many people would tell me, you can't do that, you can't do that, you can't do that. And I spent no time listening to them. And it was all just, where do I want to go, and what do I want to accomplish, and how do I go about doing that? So having that clarity, which forces you to prioritize, keep the important things important, uh, and what do you say no to? becomes extremely important. Right, but when you have the clarity, it gets easy to say no. It is. You say, this isn't part of the agenda. I wanted to talk about the book. It's called Five Bold Choices, Rise Above Your Circumstances and Redefine Your Life. It's available wherever books are sold. We'll have more on this. There's a web-exclusive interview with Jay on our Facebook page. All you have to do is go to facebook.com slash 700 Club. And then on Monday, there'll be an interview with Jay on 700 Club Interactive.